Good morning. We are live. Welcome, everyone. Let's bring in the chat up. Um, yep, okay, cool. I think all system go. Uh, let me know, guys, if you can hear me and if you can see me all right. And we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. Hi, Stefano. How's it going? Thanks for joining us. So, um, thanks for all the get well messages, by the way, guys. Um, I'm definitely feeling a bit better. Um, so, let me just um, give you a quick rundown of what we're going to be doing today. Because um, just in case you didn't, didn't see the previous one or the previous stream. All right, so um, what I have here is just a series of objects that I created to to build this sci-fi theme, and this is kind of like in uh, kind of like in response or just to help you guys uh, that are working on on environments. I already did one for characters. Uh, now I'm doing this for environments, and I hope to do another one uh, for vehicles before the end of the um, of the challenge. So for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm just referring to the challenge, the the extra mile, sorry, the extra mile, the um, Seabridge Guides uh, challenge called the 2020 First Contact. So this is a challenge that has been going on for about 15 days or more or so. Um, you still have 15 days for the deadline. And uh, yeah, there's some really cool prizes. Uh, the, um, the judging panel is incredible. And you can just check all the prizes here. It's free to entry. Um, well, en entry is free. And then you have the, the judges pretty stellar um, and yeah it's pretty simple there's already some of them or some some of you guys have already submitted the artwork so you can also check that out here and uh, yeah that's the reason why we're working on, on kind of like an environment thing uh, one thing that I should mention though it's that there is a new sponsor Reolution the Reolution guys are the ones that work or they, they develop the Character Creator 3, uh, which is a pretty awesome tool to that allows you to um, create digital humans in, in a way. Um, and it's really, really cool. And if you if you win for the first and second prize prizes here, um, you get a full license of Character Creator. So they just joined us two days ago or something like that. And I just updated those those prices. So yeah, pretty, pretty sweet deals. Uh, anyway, let's put that one out of the way. And that's the reason why we're working on this kind of like sci-fi environment, like uh, inside the corridor of a of a spaceship or something like that. Um, you have any links or tweets of uh, on sizing models for three D printing? Um, I don't like. Th there's something similar. I can't remember where it is on the Seabridge guides, but I don't have a specific one for that sort of thing. Um, I haven't done too much 3D printing to be honest. I usually just set them up and send them over to someone else to print it. Actually, let me just show you. Um, the Mimaki guys, the ones that print in color, they just sent me this, which is pretty awesome. So this is uh, the scary zombie that I did for uh, the Adobe Substance. And it, come, it came up really, really cool. It's about, I would say, I don't know, 20? 30 centimeters, something like that. Yeah, about 20 something. Um, but they printed out, so I set this up in, in ZBrush, send it over to, to them and they just print it. So I don't know exactly the guidelines for it, um, but it's pretty interesting the way that the, the printer works because they print the color straight into the, into the sculpture and the quality is amazing. I mean, I don't know if you can see it, but you can even see the the fingernails and uh, you won't probably you probably won't see it but even the the teeth and the texture itself like the texture that I did in substance came out really really nice so it's creepy but um, yeah really cool anyway sorry <laughs> that doesn't answer your question but um, that that's kind of like the my experience with 3d printing is like setting these things up and send them over um, I would recommend you check um, 
Miguel Guerrero, for example, he does a lot of 3D printing and he's a um, serious live streamer as well. Um, from the top of my head, I can think of anyone else, but if you check his channel, um, he's done some stuff uh, with a baby Yoda as well. Um, and he's like super nice guy. So I'm sure like if you ask him a question, uh, if he finds the time, I'm sure um, he'll reply to that or during the streams. Hey, Chris. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this. Um, so I have essentially one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go ahead and combine those because, I mean, combine those, uh, the ones for the, the wall. Um, oops. And um, yeah, if I, if I ran out of voice, like I said, I've been sick for a while and my voice was gone last week. So I wanna try to, <laughs> to um, limit the efforts that I do with um, while speaking. But essentially I'm gonna blend, or m not blend, sorry, um, merge this, this piece that I have selected with the, um, um, with polyframe, this one and this one, so three, and then this is going to be a separate one, the, the ceiling. This is going to be kind of like a filler that I'm gonna use just um, later on, and the door as well. So once I have those those different pieces, I'm gonna create um, an insert brush, and then we're gonna start populating a series of planes to create a corridor. So let's go ahead and just start with that. I'm gonna go into solo mode, so just to make sure I have everything I need in one. And I'm also gonna enable dynamic. Just wanna check that this is the correct one. Huh. Let's see. So this one has dynamic. This one as well. That one as well, and that one as well. So we just need to tweak the dynamic subdivision for this one. So if we open up the geometry palette and go to dynamic to enable it, we can play with, I'm just gonna turn off polyframe for the time being, and I'm gonna go ahead and select um, Q grid, set it to two, and then just play with the coverage. I'm gonna change bevel to chanfa, which is a smoother version of bevel in a way. And yeah, just play with the coverage. All right, so that gives you a much more smoother surface. Um, by the way, guys, these different shaders or these materials that I have in here, um, those are new ones. There are six materials that I that I shared um, to my email list. Um, I will put them in the Sewage Guides website if you want to grab them. Um, I did that kind of like a, as a as an add-on, like a free thing that I was giving away with the. Um, um, with a clay pack, <laughs> with a digital clay pack. So uh, all of these ones, you can just get them free if you're interested. And I'm, um, I've been using them lately, especially with the with the brushes. So that's kind of like a, um, not necessarily what we are doing right now, but just wanted to to tell you. All right. So we have the um, we have the door. We have this kind of like filler. We have the roof. And these are the ones that we're gonna combine. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off dynamic for all of these ones. Just because when we combine them, we need to rethink how they're going to work. So I'm gonna turn everything else that I don't need. And here is our wall. And we can go ahead and merge everything down. So um, actually it would be, nah, let's just go ahead and merge it down. So merge down. I was just thinking of putting them in a separate folder and, and merge that folder, but I think that's fine. All right, so now this is in a single mesh and this is not al like aligned perfectly fine with the border. Um, and I think that that would be an actual, um, like a good thing, like an advantage. So when we sort of like tile these things with nano mesh, um, this little gap that you see here or these little extra piece that is sort of sticking out a tiny bit. Um, what's gonna happen if, if those two pieces, so basically if this side is connecting with this side, there's gonna be a tiny little gap between each one of these sets 
um, and that's going to create kind of like a nice breakdown of that. We'll see how, how we go. Um, if anything, now that this is a single mesh, if you don't want to have this type of thing, a very simple way to fix it uh, would be with a clipping brush. So you can just clip that area and the clipping brushes are not going to delete any mesh. They're just simply going to flatten those. Uh, let me just <clears throat> give you a, an example of that. So if I select the clip curve and I have the perspective off, I can just go ahead and do this holding shift so, so that it's a straight line and it's just going to be giving me this perfect line um, to tile it. So you see it's completely flat. Um, what's good about this is that it doesn't it doesn't delete anything, it doesn't change the geometry, it just simply takes all those points and just flatten them towards the curve. So you'll see um, there's some um, co-planner uh, planes here but you won't be able to see those like you see in this area here. So that could potentially represent a problem in some cases um, if you were to, I don't know, <laughs> uh, do a I know, uh, baking a map, <laughs> something like that, like creating a normal for that. So that would be a problem, but that's not going to be the case in this in this example. Just wanted to give you an idea of if you want to get rid of that, that's one simple way to do it. You want to undo that because, like I said, I I think having this little gap will help uh, with the visual, you know, the, the patterns that we're going to create. All right, so that's done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tweak the dynamic subdivision again. So you'll see it's not great. And I think we lost um, the roundness here. So it's going to change things a little bit. Hmm. This is a problem because they had like different dynamic subdivisions uh, in this case. So we might have to just play with those um, individually. So let me just turn this off. I'm going to go ahead and select these meshes. Um, and for that, what I can do is just simply do an auto group. So auto group is going to give me different polygroups depending on the different separate meshes that I have within the subtool. So these three are not connected, like the points are not connected. So I can just do that very easily. And then I can select this one to isolate it. And I'm going to split hidden. All right. So let's do the dynamic subdivision for that one. So Q grid two, bevel, constant, and chamfer. All right, so that's, uh, that's like probably a good subdivision level. And for this one, we're just going to do it slightly different. So dynamic, but we're going to remove the Q grid so that we have this nice um, smooth curve. All right, so we're going to end up with uh, a few different pieces, but that's all right. All right, so now that we know exactly the dynamics of division that we're going to use, um, again, this is my going. This, this might change later, but I just want to give you an idea. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for all the pieces. There we go. So now all the pieces have dynamics of division off, <clears throat> and we can go ahead and turn each one of these subtools as um, in, um, in an insert mesh, and then we're going to convert it into a nano mesh. Um, <coughs> hey, Chris, um, can, also, can ZBrush also be used as a polygonal modeling? Yeah, absolutely. That's essentially how we build this piece, just using the, it's called the C modeler. So the C modeler allows you to, to work in that way. And we're going to use it later on um, a little bit more to add some details. But yeah, totally. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and add some details now. It's going to concentrate on this area. And what I want to do is create kind of like a tube or a, or a pipe that goes up. Um, so just 
you know, a cylinder, if anything. So what we can do is just append a cylinder. Let's see, cylinder 3D. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and scale this down. This is probably too many polygons for what I need, but should be fine. All right. So this one is kind of just a, a pipe of something that, that goes from that point. And what I'm going to do is maybe change things a little bit. So um, maybe at this point I can go ahead and oops, select maybe from this point onwards. And I'm going to assign a different polygroup. So now if I go into solo mode, I can go to the C modeler. And I can go ahead and right click, make sure I have QMesh selected and polygroup all so that I affect only the polygroup that I clicked on first. So in this case, the purple one. I'm going to click and drag. And that's just going to add this additional sort of like level or, or panel within it. So that's that's all right. I want to do the same thing here at the bottom. So I'm going to assign, I'm going to assign a polygroup. And for this one, I'm going to do the same thing. Click and drag, but this time I'm going to hold the shift key just to kind of like um, move those polygons on their normals. Uh, the bottom one doesn't really matter. If anything, you can just mask this out. Invert the mask, bring in the gizmo, center to the unmask areas with the little um, location icon here. Flatten this on the Y axis and then just tweak this a bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. You won't be able to see this anyway. Uh, the one that you will see probably is this bit. So I can just mask this area again and invert that mask, hold control and click outside of the in the canvas, bring in the gizmo again and again center to the unmask areas so that I can you know freely move that that piece like so. Let's see how everything looks. So I'm gonna definitely reduce the size of the entire thing. All right, so I think that's looking all right. Um, another thing we can do is maybe add kind of like a ring or something in here that we can use to attach as a as a hold holder or as a support to the wall. Um, I don't know what happened there with Zirush. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go into solo mode, and we're gonna do it from from this angle. So I'm gonna right click on the edge. And that allows me to select the different actions for the edges. I'm going to select a bevel, click and drag. And this one basically is going to determine the, the thickness of that holder or that support. Um, so that's just going to be automatically a new um, polygroup. So what I'll do is right click, select Q mesh again, polygroup all. And this time, instead of extruding, so if you click and drag, it will extrude click, drag and hold in shift will move. And if I um, click and drag and then hold the control key is basically going to extract that piece. So that's what I'm going to do. There, I'm going to enable double so that I can see. So now this is a separate piece, but is within the same subtool. Um, now let's go ahead and use the Q mesh polygroup all to give some thickness to this thing somewhere around there. Um, I just gave it a different polygroup just by holding Alt as I drag. So basically if I click and drag and I, without letting go of the click, I press the Alt key a few times, it's just going to give me a different polygroup. All right, <clears throat> let's, um, let's tweak this in place first. So I'm going to hold the control. Actually, let's just frame this first. 
and I'm going to give it a, an entire um, different polygroup to each one of these pieces. So again, auto group, and because of the continuity in the topology, there's only one group here and one in this area, which is a separate. So now I can hold Control and Shift to select this, mask everything, bring back everything else, invert the mask, bring in the gizmo. So it might look like a, a bit of a cumbersome process to do all of this, but once you get used to the log, once you get used to, to selecting masking um, using the gizmo and the simulator all at once, it just becomes a really really fast process. All right, so I just wanted to bring that closer. So now I need to check. Hang on. All right, so from here, I'm going to tag some polygons that I'm going to use. So um, let's go ahead and enable symmetry in the local symmetry so we can work locally. Uh, this piece is not in the center. So I'm going to tag these polygons, maybe those ones. That should be fine. Um, click and drag to extrude that. Hold the Alt key to give it a different polygroup. And I'm repeating the process here. Um, now here from the from the top, or maybe from the side actually, I'm going to mask this, invert that mask, bring in the gizmo, center to the unmasked areas, and I'm just going to move this in a bit, so that it's a bit more straight, flatten that, and push that in. Um, it's going to be pretty simple anyway. Alright, so I think that should be alright. I don't know what happened here. I think I used a polygroup, but it doesn't look too bad anyway. We might be able to, to actually refine this a bit. So I'm going to insert an edge loop around there. Another one, oops, another one here. And let's test dynamic. Alright, so there's some some polygons that I must have clicked somewhere. Yeah, there's something weird going on that I must have clicked somewhere. Um, let me just try to fix this. Modify, modify topology. I don't know if I should actually... Hmm. Let's see. So I can close the holes. I'm going to do the simplest thing I can do. Um, I'm going to check the 64 edges that are shared with more than two polygons. So definitely I did a, an extrusion, a weird one. So I'm going to fix the mesh, see if I can fix that. Nah, so this is the problem here. So I'm going to undo most things anyway. Um, that's one of the problems with <coughs> With using the the pen and the and the Wacom tablet, <clears throat> that if you like, if you don't, you don't have like precision, if you click on that and it can just basically give you um like a, it will remember the previous settings and it's just gonna replicate the same thing. So <clears throat> I think we didn't lose much. Um, I think the problem was with the polygroups. So let me just try to explain what happened there. The error. The error um, because ZBrush remembers the previous settings that you use so when we move these polygons here it gave me this polygroup and I repeat the same process here and it gave me this polygroup so basically this line or this um, this band here is exactly the same as this polygroup so when I extrude this one um, to give it thickness then it also did it for this area so I need to do the auto grouping first and now it should work just gonna repeat all of this a bit faster
Um, another thing that you can do is when you have um, the gizmo selected and certain areas of your mesh mask, you can hold control and actually extrude that again like that. All right, so <clears throat> that works a bit better. <clears throat> I'm gonna go into solo mode and enable dynamic. And now you can see what's happening here. Um, we can tweak the Q grid, so give it maybe two Q grids. And just tweak the, the coverage a bit. <clears throat> Again, all of these might change later, but I think this one works. This one works fine. Um, get out of solo mode, and I'm actually going to reduce the size of this a bit from the bottom. <clears throat> and I'm going to merge this um, with the wall. All right, so um, I think that's that's working fine. Let's see, let's see the chat. <coughs> Comics Legend, is your course open and does it cover this method of modeling? Um, yes and yes. <laughs> so, no, sorry, let me just uh, rephrase that. So it, it's like a two-part question. I'm gonna start with the first one really quick. So the course is not open yet. Um, I'm not gonna open it because, again, um, it's not just another course online. So what I mean by that is not is not just to, I'm not putting down any other course online. I'm just saying that this course is um, is a more ongoing thing. So I am very involved with the, the, the course. So if you join, yeah, there is uh, some pre-recorded content and the core of the course is there, all the steps and everything. Um, but we also do some live streams, private live streams, and there is a community where we just share feedback and that sort of thing. So if the course would would to be uh, if the course were, was permanently open and anyone can join at any time there is it's very hard for me to control um to see how many people are new in the course that i can sort of like focus on and, and give more help because the ones that are currently um in the course they're like flying and they could actually be the other teachers <laughs> in another way so um actually let me do a quick parenthesis here a quick stop um and show you something so a couple of my students have actually just shared some new stuff. Um, <clears throat> I just saw one today, that's why I just remember. Um, Javi, Javier Forquez, maybe he's going to join us at some point today. Um, he just shared something in here, in Seabridge Central. So Javier is one of my students and he's done like amazing job with the, um, with the projects. So. You know, this is the, the quality of work that the students are doing. Um, it's pretty amazing to see like the evolution as well. So that's what I'm saying. Like some, some students right now in the extra mile could actually be teachers. And the great thing about having that community inside is that um, if you don't know something, they have already gone through that process and they might already also give you an answer, right? So that's just to say that the course itself is not just something that you get, um, do it, and then you're done with it. It's like a, an ongoing thing. So that's the reason I don't open that course all the time, um, just a few times a year. Right now it's closed. However, because of the current situation, um, I also have my, I also have more hands on my hand, um, more more time on my hand, and and I I'm sure like some of you guys might might feel the same. I also have extra time now that you are probably at home. So I decided to. Um, extend the invitation of the course. So if you're really and truly interested in the course, uh, you can just send me an email to, um, I'm gonna put it here. Concept, hang on. All right, I just sent you, I uh, sent in the chat uh, um, an email. If you're interested in joining the course, um, 
just send me an email to that email saying, hey, I'm really interested. I will generate a link, an enrollment link just for you um, so that you can join us. But, <clears throat> but again, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not making it at a, I'm not like advertising it everywhere because it's not open yet. So if you go to the website, you will see everything that is part of the course and, and you will get everything. It's just that um, it's kind of like a private thing. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Um, so everyone is invited, but not everyone will join because again, it's a, it's a, it's a different circumstance. So <laughs> long story short, the course is not open, but you can still get in if you're truly interested by sending me an email and I'll open a, an, um, an, an enrollment link for you. And I'm going to keep it like this until I sort of reach capacity of the people that I can help with. So I reckon in a couple of weeks more, um, it, it will close this, this new method. Um, the second question is the, um, uh, the box modeling or this uh, C modeler. So we don't necessarily create a something out of purely that technique. It's something that is is more organic, so it's part of the the process. So <clears throat> so in a way, the C modeler is used for um, hard surface details. I teach some some techniques on on retopology as well with those and that sort of thing. So the course covers that um, technique and it covers the the use of the C modeler in many different ways, not just for box modeling. Um, I did an update last year on hard surface modeling as well. So it, it covers all that. So the, the, I guess the answer, the short answer for the second question you asked Comics Legend is it is covered in the course, but it's not necessarily uh, a single piece that, you know, it's not a, a chapter in the course that is, let's do C modeling, right? It's all kind of like embedded into the, into the, into the program, I guess. All right. So, so Hopefully that's that answers the question. Um, el Rendemar, una pregunta: ¿Cómo puedes hacer un bevel a un cubo solamente en un edge sin que afecte todo completo? Um, so el Rendemar is asking about how to do a bevel on a on a cube um, in just one edge. You can use <coughs> you can use um, crease edges. I'm going to show you real quick because it's very easy. Um, so I'm going to create a simple cube here. And if I want to only bevel this, this edge using dynamic subdivision, you have different approaches. So you can use the C modeler and, and just bevel this. But with the dynamic subdivision, what you can do is basically, um, let's just go ahead and crease everything. <clears throat> so if you go to the crease section here under the geometry tool, you can go ahead and click on crease polygroups. So if you crease polygroups, so we're just going to look at the difference between different polygroups and it will crease all of those edges. That means that that little dotted line around the, the, the border on the corner, that's um, crease. So it's going to be a pretty harsh edge. And if you just want to bevel this one, um, what you can do is simply right click on the, on the edge, select the creasing tool, and you can uncrease each edge that you want to bevel by holding the Alt key. So the way that you uncrease <coughs> or remove the creasing is by holding the Alt key. So Alt, click, Alt, click. And now <coughs> these ones are going to be um, non-creased. You probably also have to increase these ones. <coughs> I think I need to go for some, some water. <coughs> some water, otherwise my voice is going to go again. <coughs> All right, so dynamic. And there you go. We can you can play with the subdivision, <clears throat> or you can just crease those edges back again. So, so basically, every every edge is creased, but the one here is not. So when you click dynamic, you get that bevel. So hopefully that answers the question. All right, let's get back to it. A um, couple of questions uh, real quick. When you're using Simulator, how do you on tag a face? Let's say you make multiple selections and then do not um, not to use them. How to clear that selection? Uh, you can just hold the Alt and click again. It will assign a different polygroup, but it will remove the the selecting um, the temporary selection. I guess that's what you're asking. Um, hey Andrew, how's it going? So Andrew is um, one of my students. He's doing a great job as well. Glad to hear you. Uh, glad to have you here, Andrew. 
Cool. All right. Um, I'll be back in two seconds. I'm gonna grab some water. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and continue with this. I'm gonna go ahead and create my my kit or my brush to build the, the environment. So I'm gonna start with this one. We're gonna go one at a time. So this one is gonna be pretty straightforward. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to maybe just a move brush so that I don't accidentally click something using the C modeler. Um, from the brush thumbnail or the brush, actually let's do it from the brush um, palette so you guys see exactly where it is. Um, if you go to the create sub palette, um, we're gonna use the create insert mesh. You can use the insert multi mesh and that's gonna automatically create a brush for every single subtool that you currently have visible uh, or not. Not necessarily visible, but um, actually, I don't. Hang on, I don't remember. I think it's only the visible one. Um, the the reason I'm not using this is because it will be created. Um, all of those meshes will be created into the will be will be built into the into the brush in the um, in the perspective that they are in. So basically, because I have them, um, I have them all arranged kind of like to fit into this little cube of. Of, a, of an environment, uh, when I click multi mesh, is going to um, extract those meshes from that angle, and that's not exactly what I want for later on. So um, I'll that makes hopefully it will make sense later on. But I'm gonna create a insert mesh. Go ahead and do new one, and now I have this single piece that I can just click and drag. Right, so that's pretty cool. So that's working. Now let's go ahead and do the next one. So select this one. Make sure <clears throat> make sure that you are facing facing the, the mesh or in this case the, the wall. And repeat the process. I have the, the one that I already created as a as a brush already selected. So let's do create insert mesh and Sirius is now going to ask me if I want a new one. So you can have different brushes with different pieces or you can have one brush like a kit that has multiple ones. So instead of creating a new one, I'm just going to append this one to the existing one. So now uh, I'm going to, this is just an info thing. So I'm going to click on skip until the next restart. So now I have the two meshes here so I can do this one or switch to the next one and do that one, that sort of thing, right? So we're building the, the asset to, to create the, the room. I'm going to select that one. This is the roof. Now the roof, if I was, if I were to click on multi mesh, it will be inserted like this. And that's not the, the way that I want it. So I need to rotate the camera, look at it from the bottom and then do the same thing. Insert mesh, append 
and now it's in in this brush. Um, and this is very important when you're creating insert meshes, the angle at which you create or insert that mesh or create that insert mesh is going to be the way that is going to be um, inserted or yeah, um, added into the next mesh. Let's go ahead and continue. Let's do the door. So again, let's find the angle that we want to use to insert this. Insert, new, Oh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do it again. So here is our brush, create insert, append. So now it's in here. And this is just a filler. Um, I guess this doesn't really matter because we're gonna, we're just gonna insert it and change the position anyway. So let's do it from this angle. Doesn't really matter. Uh, create insert mesh, append, and I think that's it. Now, what I want to do is also create a, a series of uh, smaller little parts or meshes that we can also use with this. However, this is the one that we're going to create or turn it into a nano mesh so that we can use nano mesh to tile these these meshes. Um, so me, let me just think because I wanted to show you a couple of techniques. I guess this one is going to be the simplest one and then we can use uh, smaller meshes to populate it and, and detail things a bit more. So, yeah, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and turn this these curve, sorry, this uh, brush into a nano mesh. So now that we have an insert brush, basically allows us to, you know, click and drag and select all the meshes that we build in our asset. Um, we can go ahead and click on create nano mesh brush, right? So now this is going to be this brush here. Um, <clears throat> we can take advantage of having all of these meshes already it's gonna like set up in here like this and we can go ahead and create um, a little icon for the brush so that it's not just a cube so I'm using a um, my comics material by the way so that's why we get all of those nice um, sharp edges uh, and then if you go to the brush palette you'll see the select icon here I can go ahead and hold the alt key and click on select icon and that's just gonna give me one, the selected subtool. So let's go ahead and um, this is just for being, just trying to be a bit organized. Um, I'm gonna merge visible. So if I click merge visible, Zero is going to take everything that's visible here and it's gonna create a separate object which is just all within one subtool. This guy here. Let's repeat that process. So select the Alt key, click select icon, and now we have this little icon that looks like. You know, this is my, my kit to create this um, sci-fi environment. All right, let's go back to what we have. And now we can set the kind of like the, the digital playground or, or the, um, the, simple, the simple geometry that we can use to add all of these details and, and, and build the, the corridor. So for that, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and start a new tool. Actually, let's do a quick save. <clears throat> And if you guys have any questions so far, let me know. Happy to, to answer those before my voice go, goes again. <clears throat> All right, uh, let me check the chat. All good. Yeah, okay. All, good. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and, and I just realized that the, the little pipe that we created for this guy here is, is not reaching the ceiling. Um, ah, it's not a big deal, but what I think I, I should do just in case is go back to what I had, select this. I'm gonna duplicate this mesh. And in this duplicate, I'm just gonna hide the pipe and delete it. So delete hidden. Right? And now I can go I have my selected brush. And let's go to the brush palette again. Create insert mesh, append, and now it's here. So basically all I did here is just in the the simulator we have to recreate or redo our um, our icon. Just give me one second. I'm just 
I'll, I'll just mention what I'm doing in a second. So just recreating the icon here. All right. So <clears throat> essentially what I did is we have now two meshes um, that are the same, but one has the pipe and the other one doesn't, just in case we need it. Um, so I just use the insert mesh to append that, and that's pretty much it. All right. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and I'm actually going to save it just in case. Mm, and I'm going to save that. I'm just going to save it here in the desktop. All right, sci-fi corridor, cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and select a plane 3D or anything really, just could be could be anything. Make it a poly mesh 3D. I'm gonna turn on poly frame and I'm gonna turn that into a cube grid. So if you go down to the initialize tab, that's why I said it could be any 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 3D primitive that you choose because once you click initialize, it's gonna change. So you have three options. You have a Q cube, Q sphere, and Q grid. All right, so I'm just gonna start with a Q grid, but I'm gonna super simplify this Q grid um, so actually, let's start with a cube, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, if we start with a cube, uh, with a simple cube, so let's set it to resolution of 111 cube cube. So this is the simplest cube you can get. Um, we will be able to just extrude this, and because we, we, we will be able to extrude it, then we can just separate it in different planes. So I'll, I'll tell you what I mean in a second. I'm going to switch to the C modeler. I'm going to um, make sure I have the cube selected, polygroup all. I'm going to hold the Alt key to tag this polygon, and I'm going to click and drag to add a new one. Um, actually, we can do this, let's say, um, align full step. Hang on. What am I doing here? So, it's a step size. I totally forgot how to do this one. Let's just figure that out. Multi side. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it, <laughs> and and then I'm gonna repeat the process again. So um, I'm gonna hold the alt key just to assign a different polygroup here. So series will will remember that um, that effect. So I'm gonna click once, another time, another time, another time. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So let's make make it six, right? So six duplicates of that, uh, an extrusion. And um, now we can go ahead and just um, give it a single polygroup, and we can extract or use this cube that we extruded to select the the different planes. So um, I'm going to start with the with the floor. So I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to tag this mesh, this uh, this <laughs> these faces. Click and drag, hold control, and that will extract that. All right, um, and that's really that's really all we need, right? Um, in fact, we can just go ahead and hide the, the entire cube, and I'm gonna split it. So now um, we can create a new folder here and call it OR for original, and I'm just gonna oops, let's do it again new folder, OR, and I'm just going to hide it. So um, I just hit the the cube into this folder, and all we have is this plane that has this kind of subdivision. Um, so what I want to do with this plane is unify that first, right? so that it it sort of falls within the, um, the ideal units of ZBrush, which are 2 by 2 by 2, and then I'm going to center that pivot, center that to the the center of the world and that's pretty much it so this is going to be the floor <clears throat> which we actually haven't defined anything or any mesh for the floor uh, so we just work on something later uh, but what we need to do now is duplicate this mesh this plane and use the gizmo 3d to create the the wall so i'm gonna um, hold shift as i rotate it in the x-axis and i'm gonna make sure i get it to 90 degrees and that's it we can just go ahead and move this in place. 
and we don't have to worry too much about where we place it because that's the idea of using this method. Uh, we have different planes and they're going to have different nano meshes and then we can move the entire planes and the nano meshes are going to be just instances of the brush. Uh, again, that hopefully is going to make more sense in a second. I'm going to duplicate this again. This time I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis holding shift 180 degrees, right? And that's going to make the other wall. I'm going to enable double for all the meshes. All right, um, let's do another one. So duplicate the floor, push it up, and again, rotate 180 degrees in this case. Cool, so we have all the pieces. We just need one more for the for the door. And um, now the door we can actually do it in a single plane. So uh, we can tag this, this this single face, click and drag, hold control to extract that. We can auto group this. Um, we can also use a split group here on the split tab. So if you use this um, this this tool, group split, so it's going to check all the groups that you have and it's going to split them into parts, so in this case only two. So now we can take this one, um, center the pivot. I'm going to turn off double just to make sure, yep, just to make sure that the normals are pointing the right direction. So I'm going to use the Z axis, rotate, hold shift, there we go, and then just place this over there. All right, so this is essentially what the corridor is going to be in, a, in the simplest form, and then we're going to add complexity using the nano mesh brush that we've been creating. Um, so hopefully all this is going to be <coughs> or make more sense in just a second. Um, some of you guys that are familiar with these tools, you probably have a, a better idea of where I'm going with this, but you'll see it's actually pretty simple once we have all the assets in place. Um, Lauren, why we, why, why my selected sub tool don't change to choose color when I select one in color palette, instead the first sub tool changes, not the one I selected. Hmm, that's, um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know if I get that question entirely. Okay, I think, maybe I think I get it. So, let's say... Mm. All right, let's say let's say this is what happens to you, hopefully. So all of my subtools are kind of like white. And if I just choose a color like red, only a few of them changes and the one in your case the first one doesn't change, right? Um that could be because you somehow fill that object with that color. So meaning that Right now, this plane that I have at the at the back is the only one that I fill with a color. So if I select, let's go back to white. If I select the the top, and I fill this color, uh, fill this object with a white color. So RGB is going to be selected, um, white color, fill object. You also see that there is kind of like a, a little icon that indicates that it has poly paint. So that means that these two meshes, they have white poly paint. So if I select any other color, the only things that are going to change are the other subtools. That means that this, that I, that I can see the change kind of like in real time, when I change the color, that, um, those, that means that these ones, they don't have any poly paint, whereas the other ones um, have poly paint. So you need to either, if you just want to see which ones um, have or not, just toggle this thing on, on, on and off. So this is just a little icon. So you can hold uh, shift to toggle everything at once or toggle it back on at once so that you can see what's happening. Um, so hopefully that answers the question, don't know. All right, let's go ahead and continue. So I'm gonna start with the wall or the walls. So I'm gonna use that one and I'm gonna go into solo mode. So this is one of the walls. Um, in fact, let's do a quick renaming right wall left wall so that we know which one is which that's going to be door that's going to be the roof 
and that's going to be the ground or the floor. All right. So with the right wall, let's go ahead and select our our tool, the sci-fi tool, the sci-fi corridor tool, and I'm going to select the one with it without the pipe, and maybe we'll do the pipe afterwards. So I'm going to select that from this um, IMM viewer. By the way, uh, for you guys, because I have a, a custom UI, you might not have the same. So if you go to the preference palette and go to the interface, and I think, yep, yeah, here, IMM viewer. So if you expand that, this slider allows you to change the placement. So number two is the one that I have on the right, but you can have it at the top, which is the default version, or when you have like a default um, UI of zeros, it will be there. But you can just place this any way you want. So two for me works fine. Uh, otherwise, you can just hide it, and you can access those um, those brushes with the letter M in your keyboard. So if I hide this and I don't want to see it there, I can just press the letter M on my keyboard, M for Moda, and just select it from here. So I'm going to click on this and select that. All right, so now I'm going to right-click on this mesh, and I'm going to make sure, obviously, this is an, um, a nano mesh brush, so this one, the action should be insert nano mesh, but the target could be a single polygon, or it could be a polygroup all. So with a single polygon selected, if I click and drag, this is the result I get, just in a single place. So you can have uh, different panels for different kind of like um, tilings of the of the um, of the environment, and you can just click and keep adding. So you know, if you have different ones, you can totally create a much more um, you know dynamic visual effect. So let's just undo that. I'm going to right click and make sure I have polygroup all, right? So now I can click and drag and in all of the the planes that I created, I can have this. Now, I don't know, I think these are not these are not exactly squares because I did it kind of like eyeballing it, but we can tweak that from the nano mesh anyway. And I want to give this a tiny gap as well. All right. So that basically creates my my wall and you'll see this one right here is is not facing the right direction that's nothing to do with the actual brush it has to do with the way the nano mesh works um, so let's go ahead and tweak this one first um, actually I just remember that we also have um, a section for the top <laughs> so let's undo that and before we do anything else I'm gonna actually duplicate this right wall and I'm gonna call it um, top top bit, <laughs> right? For a lack of a better name, and then I'm just going to scale this down, and I'm just going to push this up as well, maybe maybe forward. So this one is the one that we're going to use as a base to add this piece here. All right, let's uh let's go back to where we had and click and drag. There we go. All right, so now that we just drag this into the wall, we can now have some fun with nano mesh. So I'm going to click nano mesh. And let's go ahead and first um, fix the alignment of this and the rotation, because right now it's not facing, you know, they're not straight. So when you, <clears throat> when you click and drag, you might have um, a few of different values here that are not zero. So the rotation, I'm going to set it to minus 90. That seems to be the right one. And now these are all straight. Um, the offset, I'm just going to leave it at 0.5. Right? So they're kind of like sticking out. But you can change that. So you can just, this is why I like um, this technique of using nano mesh. So we can potentially use that that plane that we're using to uh, to draw these these meshes as a window, for example, but you can just play with that. So I'm going to leave it at 0.5. Okay, and now let's arrange this alignment. So this has to do with the alignment. So if we open up the alignment, um, right now it has no alignment, so that's why one is weird like this. So if we want to align, we can do it based on the normal, and then in that case, it actually fixes the rotation, so we can set this back to zero and we should have um, our corridor. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's all That's all there is for this technique. <laughs> um, uh, let me see. 
Um, um, your clay brushes got released for free. I saw a pack just like yours with no cost at all. Even the same name. The name was same. Um, I don't know. That might be just a pirate. <laughs> pirate using, you know, the the brush pack. Um, the one that, that the one that I released is only f uh, what is it? Fifteen bucks, I think. Um. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I'm not oblivious to the fact that there's people wanting to get things for free, even though if it is just 15 bucks. Um, most of the things that I do, I don't like. I don't charge more than than that, uh, unless it's like a full-on, you know, course that I spend a lot of time um, working on and and actively be involved, like the extra mile. Um, so, yeah, like <laughs> if you wanna get it for free, get it for free, man. I mean, I'm not. Um, that's not that's not gonna affect the my, my income really it's just something that helps um helps every, every now and again um but you know it's not i don't depend on that it's just something that allows me to spend more time on creating more more um more resources so anyone that has bought it um i truly appreciate it everyone that uh, has not got it or you know got it for like for free some kind of like pirate put it somewhere um they don't they don't they're not getting the full benefit you know <laughs> um but yeah <laughs> all good no worries mate um yeah so like if you uh, actually <laughs> all you have to do is just go to the zero guides website that's all um and you can also see some some really amazing addies working with those brushes so it's called the digital digital clay pack i mean the the name is very generic so i'm not sure if the one that you're talking about it is mine i'm sure there's some free stuff i actually have some free stuff as well that you can uh, that you can try um the digital clay pack is pretty generic anyway <laughs> but yeah so um here you can see well this is um vhrbn he he, da he did uh, a lot of testing with these brushes and you know his work is pretty amazing with the clay pack, but you see some other like really awesome artists working with them with the brushes and putting them into practice. So um, yeah, it's just it's just to showcase the the different type of styles and and different looks that you'll get uh, with the brushes. So you have James, you know, he's very um, his his style is super cool and super recognizable. Um, James W. Kane, uh, same thing as Magdalena, you know, uh, she does this really amazing. Um, super lively characters. Uh, Maria, um, Maria Panfilova, of course, you probably know of her amazing work as well. So you'll see you have like heaps of different reference here. Uh, I have even my own here. <laughs> but yeah, if you go down to the bottom, uh, you can get the pack. Yeah, it's 15 bucks. Um, yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and continue with this. So now that we have um, our wall, we can go ahead and play around with the placement. So right now I have this to this prop, this um, placement to prop, right? So if I change this to fit, then Siri is going to try to fit this inside the, or fit whatever we added into the, um, whatever we inserted into that plane, fit the actual plane or the actual face. So right now it's set to 0 0.5 and that works as prop so let's say 0.5 just to run the numbers 0.5 with prop works so we know that that works but we can also set this to one so that it um it gives you the full size like 100 percent of the mesh and then we change it to fit so that also works and fill is just going to stretch things a little bit because it's not a perfect square All right, i think i think fill works um, one thing you can do if you want to see kind of like the, the division between um, each panel a little bit more is actually pretty simple. We can scale the width, so change the width um, like this. So we can gi give it a tiny bit of gap, so let's say 0.99. So it's like 0 0.1% that um, gives you that gap if you're interested. I think that might work a little bit better. And again, the, the stretching is not that much, so it works. 
Um, now, what's great about this technique is that all of these ones are instances of that single plane, right? So if you take the Gizmo 3D and you do anything with this, you're actually editing the placement, not this play, this, uh, these meshes. Um, in fact, you can go ahead and turn off the show placement, which essentially is going to turn off that placement, like so. So now you see this as if it's just an array of meshes. Uh, by the way, you can also use array, but we're going to concentrate on this one. So now that I have this gizmo, I can actually move things around, but it's actually just moving the actual um, the actual plane. So because we um, we have this aligned to normal, if I rotate this around, the the meshes are not rotating, right? The 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 nano mesh is not rotating. But if I had this aligned to I don't know near edge. When I rotate, they will rotate, and it will just change as it, you know, change the alignment. Um, anyway, what I wanted to to say with this is that now that we have this, we can later on just using planes um, change the the position and the placement of all these things, which is um, essentially what we want, really, to be able to control all this all of this a little bit more. Right, so let's go ahead and move a little bit faster now that you know this, and I'm gonna repeat this process so that it um, kind of like makes sense the more times I do it. So I'm gonna select the top bit, go into solo mode, select another piece, right click, polygroup all, click and drag, and there we go. Let's go ahead and repeat that process, uh, nano mesh. So I'm gonna align to normal, rotate to zero, and this one, I'm just going to set it to fill and 100%. Zero. Fit. Prop. Okay, prop is working better. Um, Just gonna try to place it manually a bit. And just a tiny gap in there. Um, we can also scale this down and you'll see that that actually changes the placement. So anyway, this is just why I like to play with this nano mesh like this, so that I can with a single very simple plane we can you know have fun with all of these things. Um, I'm gonna change the offset again to be 0.5 okay that should be alright and again this is going to be just a plane I can turn off the show placement and now we have this kind of array that we can tweak which is great right so we have two for the corridor let's go ahead and do the, the roof And I'm just thinking for the left wall, we can even do a different panel or just duplicate what we did. So probably don't need that at this point. Um, so for the roof, let's go into solo mode, select the roof, click and drag um, like this, go into nano mesh. I'm going to set the short edge. to normal, no alignment. Uh, okay, so I think the problem really is with this um, this face in all of the, the planes that we did. Um, so there's a way to, to just fix this one. Um, I don't I don't have to fix it often, so I don't remember exactly what it is, but we just think about it. So alignment that has to do with that's mesh, so that that's geometry. Um, that's geometry, so that means probably yeah. A line edge, spin edge. So it must be it must be this one. But these ones are just for micro mesh. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that kind of like fixed it, I think. 
So um, again, um, if you go to the modify topology and click on this align uh, mesh edges, that should fix that problem. And now we can, uh, I think it just, it just changed all of them at once. Um, I'm pretty sure there is a way to do it with the nano mesh, with the Simodra alignment. Let's see. Like I said, I don't, <laughs> I don't have to do this often, so. Nope. Hmm. Interesting. Um, anyway, there's a way to do it. I'm not gonna spend time on that right now because I think the align by point order just works fine for this case. Uh, there's an actual way where you can change and rotate the alignment. Um, if I'm not mistaken, and I think Joseph Drost has a couple of videos on that. Um, so I'll leave it to, to the expert to, to show you how, how it's done. Uh, for now that works for me. So align by, not by point order works fine. Uh, we can go ahead and set this rotation back to 90. Uh, we can use the fill object and set this to one. And that works just fine. Yeah, just fine. Number one, that's it. And that creates the nice set of meshes. Cool. All right, so we have the roof. Uh, let's do the door. So the door would be this one. And this is just a single one, so I'm going to click and drag, set it. Uh, set the rotation and uh, this is going to be one uh, actually this one is not going to be one because um, because this one is not going to fit the entire uh, square so let's just play with the placement here all right and now the the filler is something that we can um, you know, just add as a single mesh. So one of the things that we can use for this filler is duplicate this mesh or duplicate one of these uh, planes that we're using as a placement tool and then um, that's where we put that, that filler. But before we do that, of course, it's probably a better idea to just um, rearrange the pieces. And we probably need something from for the floor, but that's something that we can do with the, the Simoda. Let's see if there is any questions so far. Uh, since I'm working on several parts of this technique, is this is this one of the basic functions of Nano Mesh? So I can re read about it later. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm using a bunch of techniques. Um, right now, I'm just using Nano Mesh. So inserting. An anomesh technique or an anomesh brush, but yeah, you can you can rewind and watch what I did before. But yeah, that's essentially what this is. It's just an anomesh brush that has all those meshes that we created in the previous stream. Um, just check they're the same uh, you can get them deleted from the other side yeah yeah I mean this even if you delete them from there I'm sure there's some other person that is wanna that just wanna take advantage of that and put it out um, somewhere else it's really hard to to police that anyway um, all right uh, I think I'm just gonna duplicate these so where's my Right. Well, okay. I'm going to. I'm actually going to hide all of these pieces. So there we go. <coughs> and I'm going to work on on this part first. So in here, we can just use the Gizmo 3D to sort of like place this a bit better. Mm, 
that's about it really that's all I needed to do um, we can go ahead and I'm not sure if merging these will affect the placement of the nano mesh it shouldn't because it is uh, on a pair like on a um, polygroup basis but just in case I'm going to duplicate the wall put it into the originals just in case duplicate the top bit put it into the originals and now I'm gonna go ahead and merge these two together um, just so I can duplicate them I guess let's merge down uh, now nah, it does affect it so let's just delete that that's why I, I duplicated the the wall and the top bit all right no problem So um, I guess in this case we can make we can use the the array mesh so that we have everything in kind of like in a non-destructive way. Um, so we could simply go to the array mesh. All right. So this is another technique that I wanted to show, you, but um, hopefully it would work with this. So I'm gonna click array mesh, and that essentially creates a duplicate of that, but it doesn't have any nano mesh. Oh, it does? Yep, it does. Cool. So um, with this um, array mesh, what I want to do is offset by, let's see where the floor is. I want to offset in the, in the z-axis. So with the offset switch selected here in the array mesh, I'm going to use the z amount, and it's going to push this forward. And then I'm going to use the rotate switch and the rotate I will do it in the Y axis and I'm going to rotate 180 degrees so in the Y amount or the green axis 180 180 hang on oops let's do that again um, that's weird it should give me let's do it again Three sixty doesn't make sense right now. Don't know. I have to look into this. Uh, but anyway, it worked. So rotating at one hundred and eighty degrees should give you that rotation. Um, just thinking, why is three sixty? It's maybe something to do with the profile actually, because it's in half. Yeah, that's right. So the profile. The profile affects the rotation, so if I set it to 180 now, it should work. Ah, all right. <laughs> I don't use array much. Let me just don't undo that. So basically, the 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 profile would affect the original and the rotation of the duplicate base on the original. So that's why the default is kind of like that. Um, if I tweak this, it will actually rotate the the original and therefore it changes the um, the amount of rotation. I don't know if that makes any sense, but basically, um, a simplest way the simplest way to put it is this point here or the root, the left hand side uh, should be the the rotation of the first object. So um, let me just try to explain this. Hopefully that makes sense. So this point here is the equivalent to this mesh in here the original right and this is set to zero right and then you have the second one which is this point in here and that one is set to 360 so yeah so basically what this is doing I think is I mean I will have to I have to really look into it but basically what this is doing is as you change the profile, it will change the, let's say if you move this point in here, you put it like halfway in here, right? It's going to change the rotation of this original one, let's say through here, based on the number that you put in here. And therefore, because of the profile, it's also going to affect the second or, you know, any other array meshes. So hopefully that kind of like makes sense. But um, let's just keep it simple. It works with 360. Um, and we can go ahead and do the same thing with the with the top one. So array mesh, 
um, I want to offset it in the Z axis. And it also has to do probably with the minus minus one, I think it was. And rotate in the Y axis 360. So we need to just offset this a bit more. All right, so we have um, we have array meshes and nano mesh combined into this into this tool. Um, you could potentially just use array meshes for everything, really. It's just that the convenience of the nano mesh of being able to move things in in a block, in a way, um, is much more is much more convenient. And you'll probably see why if I like, if I decide to rotate something in here with array meshes, the, the effect of the rotation will be propagate, or propagated through all the arrays. Whereas with nano mesh, it will, do, it will do it, or series will do it based on the instance of that brush, if that makes any sense. So um, using a combination of the two is probably you know, the way to go about it. Right here we have the door. So with the door, I'm just gonna bring this closer, and also I'm gonna toggle off the placement within the nano mesh. Maybe scale it up a bit, and remember all of this that I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing it to the to the plane that I'm using as a placement, not necessarily to the nano mesh or to the to the actual door. So I'm just changing things a bit. Let's see how that looks. All right. So now we we'll probably need to um, actually let's put that on the side. I'm kind of like designing as I go as well. Um, let's go back to this plane and let's tweak the the offset. So let's tweak the offset. So minus one point four. Nope. Minus one point five. <laughs> minus 1.45 that seems to be a right right um, let's see minus 1 point whoops minus 1.42 that's almost there <laughs> just trying to make it eyeballing it but minus 1.43 that's the one. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna use this one to do the same thing. Let's see if the same value works. It shouldn't, but 1.43. Yeah, no. All right. I think that works, um, and we have pretty much the the corridor almost ready. As in, that's most of the things that we're going to do um, before we get into the you know creating the actual mesh and adding more details and and that sort of stuff. But how we how are we doing with time? Oh, we only have about half an hour. So let's go ahead and try to set the the entire corridor. The kind of like the what's the name the, the sci-fi environment and then in the next um in the next stream we we go ahead and and finalize it properly so i'm going to use i'm going to turn on the roof as well and just position that in place so that's fine All right, so that's looking kind of interesting. And we'll do a, a quick test 
key shot before the end of the stream just to to be able to play around with the camera a little bit more uh, because obviously in Zero we cannot sort of like go inside the the corridor um, I'm also going to turn off or maybe just leave it as it is um, I'm gonna use the the floor and where is my oh, I haven't added the the filler so I'm gonna use the the floor try to place this a bit better um, the floor doesn't um, it's not gonna have any any insert mesh so just right now so actually you can increase the the size of it There we go, and we can now maybe use the the filler. But for that, I'm just thinking. A lot of this is just kind of like a very organic process. So, as I as I go through these through these motions, <laughs> I I start to think which ones will be the best um, the best approach for this. I did a kind of like a feature mapping. Um, in the first stream, but this one is kind of like a more uh, I just want to show you different techniques, but also try to Get somewhere right because otherwise I'll just um, Dive too deep into explaining things and then we actually don't end up with anything uh, Tangible so I want to do a little bit of both So I think the easiest thing in this case to to play with that filler is to to just grab it from from here as a as a tool and I'm gonna copy it as a subtool sorry subtool and go to this tool and paste it in there all right so I can just play around with the placement of this and I'm just looking or paying attention at the uh, to the um, to the frame of that door so I think I'm going to duplicate it one more time. Again, this is just a mesh that I'm going to use to fill in areas, so doesn't really matter. Um, all right, so I'm going to take this one and I'm going to mirror and weld it. Oops, mirror, hang on, symmetry, mirror and weld. Oh, whoops, let's undo all that. Um, I'm going to go into solo mode, toggle on the floor. So. I need to mirror and weld on the Z axis. So by default, if you just use the mirror and weld function would be on the X, but you can actually click on these little letters at the top and that will change the axis, right? So the same thing for mirror. So I'm, I'm gonna mirror that first and then mirror and weld. Hang on, um, I'm gonna do it without the local symmetry. This is another thing that I should explain us actually. So with with the mirror and weld, uh, you have two options. You can use the local symmetry for you guys should be under the transform palette. Um, and if you use that, Sirius is going to look at the entire volume of the mesh. So in this case, this is kind of like the left edge of that volume, the top edge, the bottom edge, and the right edge is here. So this is the entire volume of the mesh and when you do a mirror or well a mirror and weld in this case with this one on uh, what series is going to find is that middle line of the entire volume and it's just going to mirror and weld this thing so that's why you end up with this you know the gap in here and this place or this um, this polygons merged to to the other side that's using the mirror and weld now if you use um, if you don't use local symmetry, Sirius is going to take into account the middle line of the of the world, which in this case is here. So if I use mirror and well right now, um, Sirius is going to give me something like that, right, with this gap in here. So what we need to do actually is because we don't have everything in in the center, so everything is kind of like offset. Uh, we can go ahead and bring in this closer to the center line, like around there. And now we can do the mirror and weld thing. And and that's really that's really all there is to it. So now that we have this as a full mesh or a mirrored mesh, we can go ahead and place it a bit better.
and let's reposition that door. Cool. Um, and this one, of course, is actually not in the center. I'm gonna toggle the the floor off, and no, actually, let's toggle one of the walls. And for that, we can go to the to the right wall, toggle the array mesh off, top bit, toggle the array mesh off, so that we can actually see the inside. Um, so let's take this one, push that back a bit, right? So that's kind of like one of the, the things that I wanted to do with that filler, um, so that I can place it and fill those gaps. And I think it's working fine. And then we have this other bit that I duplicated, um, and we can, you know, we can use it to to do more things. Actually, I don't mind the one that I created, so I can duplicate that, and and we can do some array mesh. But I'm gonna do it from the other side. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> this stream has been a little bit over the place uh, in terms of the steps that I'm taking, but hopefully you get the idea of all the the techniques that I'm showing. So this is kind of like the the other side of the room. So what I'm going to do with this is create another array mesh and we can tweak this and this is why the array mesh is also very powerful because you can uh, have a, a duplicate or array mesh of that instance and then change anything that you want on a single mesh and it will be duplicated or propagated through that array. Um, just a quick second. Hey Paula, I'm taking your zero score tutorial on LinkedIn. Uh, thanks for putting it up. No worries. I'm glad uh, the Mac bubbles. <laughs> I'm glad that you like it. Um, there are actually a couple more in the in 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 LinkedIn Learning that I've done for them. Um, the the zero score is a is a good introduction for that. There is another one for zero. Uh, it's called the Kit Bash. So it's just uh, showing um, a technique of kit bashing to create creatures in in zero. And there's another one about um, uh, product design. So I just go through the process of doing a, a more like a like a product design and how to present that in Keyshot. Um, so that one might be interesting as well for you. All right. So if I go to the array mesh, this one I'm gonna offset it in. Let's check in the x-axis. So offset x-axis. So I'm just gonna offset it like that. But I'm gonna add a few more. So right now I have two. I'm gonna repeat it. Maybe uh, one, two, three, four, five, five times, and then I'm gonna offset this. Or maybe I need one more actually. Six. I'm just trying to place them right before or right after. Mm right before yeah maybe I'm not gonna be able to do it like this I'm gonna reduce it to only three um, minus minus 100 and then just play with the repeat all right roughly there with the array mesh now this one is something that I don't want to have it like so obvious especially because from this angle is going to basically cover this um, this little thing that we did in there so we can use we can go into solo mode and use the C modeler to tweak this a bit more so because we have the array mesh we actually just need to work on one thing and it's gonna be duplicated or propagated across the entire thing um, I think I'm gonna start with just the scaling things like that, uh, but I'm not sure if I like that. Uh, 
Um, hmm. You know what? Let's go into solo mode, and I'm just gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna take this. I'm actually going to enable local symmetry. I'm gonna right click on the edge, and I'm gonna click on bevel. Increase that, and also I'm gonna to toggle array mesh just for a second. And I'm gonna go ahead and let me undo a couple of things actually. So turn off array mesh. This is what we. This is the filler by itself. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna use the insert insert line to create a couple of lines in here, and maybe another one around here and another one here. And maybe a different one here. Now the reason I'm doing that is just because I want to go ahead and and use the Q mesh to insert a few of these things. So if I go ahead and maybe let's get rid of the center line. So delete. Edge loop complete. And there we go. And this one inside as well. So it's just easier to to work with a single polygon rather than two in there. And now I can go ahead and use the Q mesh, tag these two polygons, and then push them back. And because I'm using the Q mesh, I'm essentially merging these these vertices together. So now this looks a little bit simpler. And we can keep doing that, like moving this backwards a bit. So I'm gonna add, oops, I'm gonna add a new insert around here closer to the to the actual wall this edge here and that is just to follow the same principle that I just did so using the Q mesh right um, I tag these two faces in here and then I push them back so that they get merged with the ones um, with the with the edge behind them in a way so then uh, the next thing that I want to do is or I created this edge here which because we're using symmetry is also around this area so it's closer to this wall and the principle is going to be the same thing we can tag um, the third step in this case will be tagging these two faces and using the Q mesh to push that in and they're going to um, be kind of like merged with this line in here right so we're gonna end up with a gap like this so let's do that I'm gonna go into solo mode Tag these two, and let's go ahead and do that. Cool. So that's what I wanted to do. Um, we can go ahead and do the same thing with these ones. Let's see how much we can change this. Just push these things down, and this one up. Tag this one down. All I want to do is sort of um, open a bit some of open this a bit just to add some space and we enable array mesh is going to be duplicated across the entire thing um, let's go ahead and do these ones as well maybe not that one um, just thinking what would be a good one I think this line is not bad um, this one here also can move them like so all right so I think that's not bad now we can just go ahead and use the masking tools and then reposition this with the gizmo 3d that's that's all what we're gonna do just trying to find something interesting for the design really Playing out with me. Um, okay, let's clean up. Alrighty, so we are nearly there. I'm gonna actually let's take this one. 
push it up. I'm just really figuring things out as I go. And with the top ones, not, I'm not entirely happy with those. I think the, the roof was kind of like good as it, as it was, very simple. So I'm just going to take everything and push it up so that you don't see much of it. Just a tiny bit of, of details in there. Oops. And then push these ones as well. So it's not really a lot of things that this is changing, I hope. Just adding a little bit of uh, visual interest to the floor. All right. I think I'm going to push these ones up a bit. And then, oops. And then back again. Okay. Let's see how that, <laughs> that looks. So we have the array mesh, and it's going over the entire thing. I think that works. Um, just to make it more interesting, we can just add some paneling inside and we are about to, you know, call it a day for today <laughs> and then we do the, the test. So there's a tiny bit of like, you know, uh, volume or uh, difference in between between the heights here at the at the height in the in the floor and then using the paneling that should give us uh, an interesting an interesting thing, an interesting um, design here. So I'm going to right click on the edge, go to insert, click insert. I'm going to manually place this like so. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a single polygroup. Now you can tag this manually or you can right click on the polygon or on the edge and click on polygroup. So if you click on the edge, Sirius is going to actually create a polygroup for that polygroup. So the way that that works, in case you're not familiar with it, is a poly loop. So you have edge loops and you have poly loops. So a poly loop. So let's say that that's kind of like this, right? So um, in zeros you have a poly loop and you have edge loop. So an edge loop. is essentially the edge the edge on that loop so a loop of geometry this is going to be the edge loop and the poly loop is the actual loop that is made by polygon so it's kind of like the the horizontal version in a way so that's the poly loop going this way right so um if with the similar if you select the poly loop uh, the poly group sorry Polygroup. If you select the polygroup in in the C modeler, and then you select edge loop, uh, sorry, uh, poly loop, then uh, you just need to click on any of these edges that form the poly loop, and Siri is going to create a polygroup following that sequence. Hopefully that makes sense, but it's kind of like useful to know that. Uh, so now I have a single polygroup here that I can use Q mesh to sort of like click and drag. I'm going to hold Alt to change to a different polygroup. And I can go ahead and do even more um, insert. I'm going to do it not right in the middle. And then use bevel. Oops, beveling those. Around there. And just to add an extra panel here with the Q mesh. Click and drag. OK, so if I toggle this off, you'll see that definitely looks a bit more interesting. And let's see how everything looks 
together. Cool. In fact, we can do probably something about the the bar here at the bottom, or maybe we can use the the plane as a as the floor to raise some bits and pieces and, and make it a bit more interesting. Maybe add some some grids or something like that in the next in the next stream. Um, but I think I think it's working. Let's go ahead and I do a quick save. Actually, I haven't saved. Um, let's go ahead and um, toggle on the other stuff. So on the top bit, enable array. The right wall, enable array. And we have our corridor almost ready to to do to do what we need to render. Series is hopefully not going to crash on me. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick render. So in this case, I'm just gonna switch to my standing position here. So I have more control with the, with the mouse for the render thing. Uh, again, this is gonna be just a quick render. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, we're not gonna spend too much time in here. It's just that doing the rendering key shot is probably a little bit faster and uh, you will be able to see the the real the real idea of what we're doing this in this fashion, so that we can just sort of get into that. Otherwise, with Zeroch, we won't be able to do it with that camera, just because of the way that Zeroch works. So here it is, the mesh um, inside Zeroch, right? So we can have now the camera here, and the corridor, and of course we can change the environment. Get something going from the back maybe, from that door. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a material because right now it is using the series default, so. Let's give it a plastic one to the entire thing. Maybe this environment is not the ideal one. There we go. This one seems to be more interesting, definitely. And we can place some new lights. Just a quick filler in there. Another one from the other side. So Let's position that camera. I just want to show you the the whole point of what we're doing here um, in ZBrush. So I'm just gonna give this a red color just to see where the light is. Make it brighter. And let's change the lighting to be interior, so we get a little bit of that um, photon mapping type of thing. <laughs> and you know what? Let's just keep it simple. Let's just do. Otherwise, it's gonna take a little bit longer. And let's change that to a bluish color. All right, so I'm gonna also do a couple more things. I'm gonna change the perspective of the camera. Just increase the the dramatic effect with a distortion of the lens. And I'm gonna just save that camera. How are we doing with time? We have about five minutes. All right, let's just try to do a quick concept here. Um, I'm gonna do a new camera. I'm gonna call it render. And I'm gonna lock that in place. And then we can go to the free camera. I'm also going to go to the environment in here. 
go to settings, set this to a white color or a black color, sorry, so that you don't see the environment. Uh, and I'm going to create a new geometry. I'm going to click create a cube in here. Uh, you can do this also from ZBrush and it actually should be faster, but just given the time, I'm going to do it in here. Um, I'm going to scale it down. And I'm going to assign a material that is actually a light. So now I can take that cube, move that in place, and if I push it down enough, it becomes a light inside the corridor, which is what I want. So I can just reposition this a bit more. And obviously play with that material because it's pretty intense. Let's reduce the, the power quite a bit. All right, and then we can actually duplicate that. Control D, whoops, not Control D, sorry, that was to hide it. Let's change the power. Let's go for. Um, Hundred duplicate, and now we can position that a bit further. Again, this is probably much better if you do it just directly in zero, so you can know where you're placing those those lines. I want to take these two materials and link them together, and I'm going to use maybe a bluish tint light, so it's more sci-fi the corridor itself. All right, now let's go to the camera that we set up and very quickly we have something that, you know, it works a bit more and then we can actually rotate the environment around, try to find some more interesting reflections and that, remember, this doesn't have any any roughness or anything, it's just a simple material. You can actually make it super rough or reduce the roughness. I like the um, Kind of like the the roughness, and something that I like to do within this process between ZBrush and Keyshot um, is we have about three minutes, so I'm just gonna mention that really quickly. Is the fact that you can have within Keyshot the ability to round some of the hard edges that come from ZBrush. So, for instance, um, let's take one for example. I'm gonna use uh, a new camera. So this new camera, if I go, I say let's say around here there are a bunch of a bunch of edges we can take that hang on. I don't think we're gonna have enough time to to do it but if you hold the alt key and click on an object key should will isolate that Maybe the environment is too, it's too strong. <laughs> All right. So I just want to get closer here. So this is what came from Zero because again we haven't applied any dynamic subdivision or anything like that. It's just a quick test to see if what we're doing is working and how we can you know iterate and change it. So um, because this is quite harsh, those bevels and those edges, they don't feel as natural. They look very 3D because everything in life has at least, well, most of the things will have a very tiny edge um, or bevel in the edge that allows it, allows the, allows the object to catch a highlight in that area. And that's very useful to, in, in terms of realism. So inside Keyshot, you can just select the mesh from ZBrush go to the properties of that mesh and then here at the bottom you have these rounded edges and if you just change the radius you'll see the effect in real time so point zero one this is quite tiny 
has to do with the scale of the object. So now I have a tiny little bit of, e um, of edge in there. I'm gonna give it a different material just so that you see. So you have those rounded edges, which is, which is really cool. Um, I'm gonna go back to the camera, show all parts. Oh, we changed the environment. Let's do another one. I'm gonna go for this one. This one is, gives me a quick sci-fi idea. Hope. Ah, oh, I changed the material. That's why. Let's go again with the plastic. And we are about to finish for the day. I'm just gonna let this one rest up here. Um, but you get the idea of what we're doing. Of course, there's a lot of things that we can improve in this environment, and we will do that in the in the next stream. Um, essentially, in ZBrush, all we've done today is use the convert the 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 meshes that we worked on the previous stream and create an asset out of it, or a series of assets that we can then use with nano mesh and array meshes to create this corridor inside ZBrush. And the idea now is, now that we have this as a, as a base, we can go ahead and convert all of those meshes. Once we're happy with the, the overall design and all that, we can convert those meshes to something solid, like a single, um, single set of meshes or a single mesh. And, and then we can start using some, you know, add some tubes and pipes and maybe some grids for the floor, uh, some insert meshes for like some switches and that sort of thing, like details. And once we have that, it, we can just like send it to any software that we want to, to render and, um, and texture it and all that. But, you know, that's, um, that's it for today for me, guys. Um, I'm going to leave it here. And cool. All right. So no questions so far. All good. All right, so I'm gonna leave it here, guys. Um, just for those of you who weren't here at the beginning of the of the stream, just a couple of things, a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, make sure you go and check out the challenge page, the the 2020 first contact challenge page. It is um, it is moving forward. We have about 15 days, and feel free to share your progress with the hashtag 2020 first contact. Um, there are some awesome prizes, and the reason I'm mentioning this is not only to, you know, um, let you know that the the deadline is fast approaching, but also because the Realution guys have joined the sponsoring team, so now the prizes just become a bit more juicier. So in the first and second place, now you will get a full Character Creator 3 pipeline license, which is this one, because you don't know about it. Um, it's a pretty powerful software I have a I have a, a like a walk, tutorial slash walkthrough of how to use this in combination with ZBrush um, that you can find I think it's still in our station you'll find it in there um, but anyway it's gonna be really cool now the prices look fantastic uh, so you have 15 days more and the other thing is it's not here um, I don't have it there. Anyway, the, the other thing is that the, the extra mile course is currently closed, but um, I'm basically allowing people to, to join us or inviting people to join us if they're truly interested uh, as a kind of like an expression of interest. So although the course is, remains, the extra mile course remains closed, if you are interested in joining us for the next couple of weeks, um, send me an email to, I already shared it, but I'm gonna share it one more time. Um, if you send me an email to pablodonmunos at 3dconceptartist.com, you will be able to, um, I mean, you send me an email and say, hey, I'm interested, I'll send, I will generate a link just for you, and then you can just join us if you wanted to. Um, and again, I explained this already, but the reason I don't open it, or it's not permanently open, um, is because I like to kind of like control the intake of students so that I can uh, focus on them a little bit and help them out a bit more. Um, but that's about it. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it here, and I'll see you next time. Uh, next week, I think the, um, the schedule for April is already up. So I'll see you next week, uh, same day, same time. And take care and stay safe.
See you guys.